Welcome. My name is Corinne Waldau, the Economic Development Director for the Boulder Chamber. I want to thank you, our business leaders, for committing your time today to learn about the procedures for getting your businesses up and running in a safe manner. We know we need to get our economy rolling again and getting businesses open, but protecting public health is critical to achieving that goal so that we do not have to go backwards any way, any place in the process. Thank you to our Boulder County Chambers, Economic Development Agencies, and Cities for their partnership in putting these industry-specific events together. We also thank Boulder County Public Health for hearing our community's interest in working hard to get our businesses open and for working with us collaboratively to develop safe operating procedures that are sensitive to unique business characteristics. Again, our shared goal is to get our businesses up and running, but to keep them running in a matter that protects the health of the business owners, their workforce, and the customers. I'm going to hand it over at this time to Zach Swank with Boulder County Public Health. Hi, everybody, and thank you, Corinne, and to the Boulder Chamber, as well as uh, the other chambers and partners across Boulder County. Uh, for helping to put together these webinars. Today, we're talking about the retail industry in this session, um, and we'll go through a bit of an agenda. Uh, so today we're gonna cover what's allowed, how to do it safely, and the resources that are available to support you with the intent of having at least a half an hour uh, for your questions and hopefully our answers. So, uh, this is a, a sampling of you know, who we're talking about here under the retail industry. Um, you know, it's not exhaustive, uh, but if this doesn't look like your business, uh, check out some of the other webinars that we're hosting uh, through the Boulder Chamber, uh, which you can find on their website. So timeline, this will be familiar. Um, we've been under the stay at home order uh, since March 26th, um, and that was extended until this Friday. Now, starting on Saturday, we transition to the state safer at home order, as well as uh, the Boulder County face covering order. But long term, it's important to remember that you know, we're going to be under some version of uh, an order like the one like like safer at home until we have a vaccine treatment or herd immunity. You know, the, uh, the contagiousness of COVID-19 has not changed. Uh, we are just changing our approach on, on how we work to mitigate its effects um, and on the community. Uh, and so that is gonna to continue to be in place uh, for the foreseeable future. And we're talking months, um, not weeks. You know, even after the current safer at home order expires, uh, you can expect to have something similar uh, put in place over the course of June. So we're currently under stay at home. That goes until Friday, um, but curbside is allowed um, and has been allowed uh, for the last week or so. Um, and then we have the new face covering order and preparing for safer at home. So the face covering, uh, if you are outside your residence um, and you won't be able to uh, uh, maintain uh, six feet of separation between you and others, uh, you are required to have a face covering. The exceptions are if it's not safe uh, for some reason or for a medical reason, uh, if you're, you know, alone, you know, you're outside your residence, but you know, you're, um, you know, at your office uh, and you're the only person there, uh, or for children 12 or under. So what is safer at home? Uh, it's important to emphasize that, you know, we still need to stay at home as much as possible. Um, the, again, you know, the, the COVID is just as contagious as it was. Um, we're striking a balance between uh, you know, what our public health director calls a, you know, a no-win situation, right? We have, um, you know, health risks if we loosen our restrictions, um, but we also have, have health and, you know, economic risks if we keep them tight. And so, um, you know, it is really incumbent on all of us um, to follow these 
borders as closely as possible because the thing that we, we most want to avoid is seeing an increase in cases and then backsliding back into a stay at home order. Uh, so uh, most businesses are now gonna be able to open with restriction, uh, although some high exposure businesses uh, uh, such as you know, a yoga studio or an esthetician uh, are not gonna be able to operate. Um, you know, restaurants still can't have dine-in customers. Um, and really this is new territory for all of us. Uh, we're all learning how to navigate this as we go uh, and it's gonna continue to change and evolve. So hey. I will pass it over to my colleague, Angel Bond, who is the specialist working uh, as liaison for the retail industry. Great, thank you, Zach. And uh, thank you, Boulder Chamber, for hosting these. Um, as Zach said, um, I'm gonna be addressing the retail industry today. Um, so right now I'm just gonna talk about what is permitted at this point. Um, so as Zach mentioned, we are under um, extended stay at home until um, the 8th, so on the 9th, um, retails that were deemed non-essential previously can start operating. And you can operate now as long as you're doing this curbside pickup and delivery. And Boulder County has developed a curbside pickup and delivery resource guide for you that's available on our website, um, just to ensure that you're protecting public health um, while modifying your um, business. Um, and on the 9th of uh, May, we're gonna have retails um, that were, retail agencies that were deemed non-critical before. Um, on the 9th, they're able to operate, but it's with restrictions. And the important thing to consider is that um, those retail industries need to be at 50% capacity, or they need to maintain the ability to have people stay six feet apart. So that 50% capacity is just kind of a guiding ruler. Um, if you cannot maintain that six foot distance while um, having 50% capacity, then you need to modify that so that you can maintain that social distancing. Additionally, um, there's increased free, uh, cleaning and disinfectant frequency that's required under Safer at Home, and we'll get into those a little bit more when we talk about the workplace requirements. Also, um, what retail industry is expected to do is to post signage for employees and customers on uh, safe social distancing, hand washing, wearing masks, and such, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, but also you need to have increased communication and reminders with your customers, uh, reminding them to stay six feet away from each other and from your um, employees. And also people need to wear masks and gloves in order to stay safe. And as um, Zach had said earlier, um, everybody, including customers, are required to wear masks um, as of May 9th. Um, so that should be, um, everybody should be wearing masks at that point. Um, additionally, vulnerable populations are addressed and specifically called out in the Safer at Home order, and they can't be compelled to um, come into work. This also covers people who are caring for vulnerable populations. So we have provided a checklist for you all, and I think Corinne had sent it out at the end of the last feedback session, and it is available on the Boulder County website now. So um, we just wanna um, underscore that compliance with Safer at Home is mandatory. So this is a law, and this is something that has been developed at the state level, and we have developed a compliance tool, um, the checklist. So the checklist is voluntary, you don't have to use um, our check boxes necessarily, but we want it to be a useful tool for you all. It's also a communication tool. So if you voluntarily go through this checklist, um, you can post a, a poster that the chamber has um, created up to let people know that you are aware of the requirements for Boulder County and also Safer at Home and you're complying with those. As far as enforcement goes, we're asking for voluntary compliance. We don't have the staff or the resources to go out and really monitor this uh, boots on the ground. But what we're doing is uh, we do have a complaint line and we do have an email where people can send us um, reports of people and businesses not complying with the Safer at Home order. We're taking an inquiring first, educating first attitude. So we're not gonna come down hard and um, basically uh, nail businesses if they aren't um, complying. We're gonna give you the tools that you need to succeed at first. And we will, um, perhaps walk you through the checklist and let you know all of, make sure that you are aware of all of the elements of the Safer at Home order that you have to comply with. And then in some cases, uh, we may have an order to close or civil action. 
<clears throat> excuse me, but this is when there's repeated reports of people and businesses not complying. Um, we really do want to take a partnership approach with this and help you succeed. So we're gonna go through three separate areas that the checklist and the Safer at Home order cover. The first is workspaces. The next is provisions that need to be in place to protect employees. And then next would be provisions that need to be in place to protect the public. So first we're gonna start with the workplace checklist. So first and foremost, all of the industries must follow the general guidelines in addition to their industry specific guidelines. Also, if you're operating before May 9th, you do need to have curbside and delivery um, in place if you were a non-critical business previously. And you're encouraged to um, continue that curbside delivery even beyond the open with restrictions date, because really the goal is to minimize the number of people who are in contact with each other. So that really is a best practice that we would encourage you to develop after or continue um, supporting after the night. On the 9th, um, as I had mentioned earlier, businesses, retail businesses are able to be open with restrictions. And again, that 50% capacity um, is kind of the guiding ruler for that, but there's also um, the capacity to maintain the six foot social distancing. So if you are at 50% and you're still not able to maintain that six foot social distancing between employees and customers, then perhaps you would want to go down a little bit more um, for your capacity. And we do have a tool that I'll point out um, after this um, PowerPoint workshop. Additionally, there's increased uh, cleaning and sanitation of high touch surfaces. So just think baskets and shopping carts and payment systems, things that people are uh, continually going uh, and touching various people are touching, you wanna to ensure that those are cleaned and you can um, clean those using soap and water or a disinfectant. Additionally, there's a requirement for daily temperature checks and symptom checks. So this is something with smaller businesses that you can have your staff do at home prior to coming in and then they can report to you that they did their temperature check and let you know what their temperature was. And what we're looking for there really is 100.4. Um, that's kind of the guiding temperature. Um, if it's under that, then people should be good. If it's over that, then we need to uh, report that to CPDAG. And I'll walk you through um, how to do that here in a bit. Additionally, uh, plexiglass barriers at checkout counters are mandatory under the Safer at Home. So you do have to have that um, solid barrier between your employee and the public when um, that six foot distance is impossible to uh, maintain because of that transaction that you're having. Additionally, um, even though you have a plexiglass barrier up in place, you still do have to wear um, masks. Your employees still do have to wear masks. And then also for retail specifically, there is a restriction on the returns that can, um, everything that, um, you, excuse me, Everything that is returned needs to be able to be properly sterilized. So you'll have to establish some sort of um, return policies um, in light of the COVID outbreak. Next, we'll talk about the employee checklist. So these are the provisions that are needed to protect your employees. So you need to provide your employees guidance on what it means to have six foot distance between employees and customers. They need to wear gloves and face coverings. And um, the face coverings don't have to be a mask, they can be homemade masks. Um, they're, we're pretty loose on that guidance as far as, you know, we don't want people going out and getting medical grade masks because we don't want you competing with the medical industry. Also, you should be encouraging virtual or contactless payment systems so that people don't have to um, hold that same stylus. And that can be set up ahead of time and have people pay before they pick something up. Also, we're encouraging you to have frequent breaks so that people can go wash their hands, your employees can go wash their hands throughout the workday. And then also we're requiring that employees stay home if they have symptoms. And there are some resources to let you know what those symptoms are. As far as the customer checklist, um, you are required to have signage that encourages social distancing and also wearing masks. Um, and that signage should be bilingual in Spanish and in English and the Chamber has put together some of those resources for you. You should have dedicated hours for high-risk individuals and by high-risk individuals we mean people who are over the age of 65 or they have um, some sort of previous um, pre-existing condition that makes them especially vulnerable to the COVID virus. Um, also you should have signage encouraging face coverings for the public and um, we have created 
a tool for you all to use to kind of um, walk through that scenario, uh, maybe through your staff training, but basically um, how to confront um, people who are visiting your stores who don't have face coverings on. So just basically getting to the, um, acting in a way that is basically inquisitive and educating people and not necessarily being accusatory at first. And I'll walk you through where that resource is. And then also just providing supplies for customers to be able to sanitize those high touch areas such as baskets or um, shopping carts. So these are some of the questions that we got last, um, last week. Um, so one of the biggest questions that we got was about the protective plexiglass screens and they are required. Um, some of the questions were about the, the dimensions of the plexiglass and we don't have guidance to that level. We've um, taken all those questions and we were, we've referred them up to the state. Um, so maybe we can have some uniform statewide guidelines, um, but you do have to have um, the protective plexiglass screens in place before you open on May 9th. Also, as far as cleaning and disinfecting goes, um, there were some questions about clothing and other soft goods. We don't have further um, information on what that actually entails. We've also taken those questions and we referred them to the state for statewide guidance but they, we do have a resource that is on the Boulder County website about how to um, clean and disinfect um, clothing, but it's not necessarily goods for like sell. Um, it's mostly like laundry and those practices. Also, um, the, another question that we got was about social distancing in small stores or separated areas. So um, this was in particular in response to the requirement to have aisles, one-way aisles throughout the store. And um, if you don't have a large, if you don't have aisles, then there's no requirement for you to have one-way aisles throughout your store, but you should attempt to have some sort of flow of traffic in your store so that people don't come into contact with each other. That's really trying to just minimize the people who are coming face-to-face -face contact in a small area. Additionally, um, if you have a separated area of your retail establishment, such as a garden center, then you also still need to monitor the six foot distance in that um, separated area. So if you were a large retailer and had a separated garden center, but everybody who you let in was in that separated, in that separated garden center, you would have to look at the dimensions of that um, separated area to ensure that you were, um, you had maximum, or sorry, you had the minimum of six foot distance between all of those customers. Also, another question that we got uh, was about cleaning products. And um, just to let you know, soap and water is effective against um, the virus. And then also, there are guidelines on our website about the disinfectants if you want to use a disinfectant instead of a cleaning supply, instead of a soap and water supply. Um, and then another question that we've gotten was, are homemade masks okay? And they are. Um, they are effective. Um, they are an effective barrier. So I wanna point out some other resources here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the, the PowerPoint presentation. So um, the CBDAG um, webpage here has information on the outbreak. Is that big enough or should I make it bigger? Can you see that? Okay, great. So um, this is the CBDHE um, COVID-19 page, and you can scroll down and find um, your sector specifically. So this is just covid19.colorado.gov. Um, and if you go to retail, it has all of the guidelines that you'll need as a retail establishment. So that's really helpful. And then they have some additional mask guidelines, some symptom screening, um, more resources that will be helpful for you. Additionally, Boulder County has um, our website here. This is our COVID, um, this is our COVID-19 guidance for Boulder County Safer at Home. And we have we break down, um, we have some resources that I spoke about in this presentation, such as uh, face covering guidance, um, symptom screening. So if you have an employee who has a temperature that's over 100.4 then they would be um, directed to go to the CPDAG symptom screener to enter in that information. Um, we also have um, some outbreak guidance. So if you have more than two uh, employees who um, have symptoms or have been positive, 
uh, tested positive for COVID-19, then you would um, follow the outbreak guidance for businesses. Additionally, um, we have the script that I had talked about, about how to talk to your customers about um, putting on a mask and wearing a mask. Your specific checklist is here under retail. Um, and this is what it looks like. And then it just basically goes over who it applies to. And then uh, we have broken it down the same way that we broke down the, um, the PowerPoint presentation with the workplace, the employee, and the customer safety. And we do have links within this for the CPDHE symptom tracker or points when you would need additional resources. So this is really what you would be doing going through in order to put those posters up in your um, business to show that you are aware of the Boulder County guidelines. And um, additionally, let's see. Additionally, um, the guidance for wearing masks, this was from the COVID-19 Colorado.gov page. Um, and this is the script that we had talked about, the sample script for businesses, um, encouraging people to wear face coverings. So um, between these two websites, between the CPDAG website and then the Boulder County website, we've referred to a lot of additional resources to help you be successful in this. So um, also the Chamber has been a huge partner and um, wonderful asset in this. They've created a lot of documents and um, like posters for you all. Look to your industry associations. I know, I know the National Retail Federation has some guidelines on COVID. Um, and then also the cities. Just keep in mind that at some point the city's um, guidance might diverge from the states. For example, the city of Boulder currently has the requirement to wear ma masks for all members of the public. And then um, we had talked about this in some previous episodes or some previous webinars. The Energize Colorado Marketplace will be available soon. We understand that it's going to be challenging for all of these um, businesses who haven't been open to get all of the PPE and all the requirements on such short notice. So um, this Energize Colorado Marketplace should have some resources for you in the coming days, but we do have a resource on our Boulder County site that will help you um, find out just some areas where you can buy masks and gloves for your employees. If you have any additional questions or suggestions, um, we do have a COVID biz at bouldercounty.org email account, and you can just email us your questions and we'll um, send it to the appropriate person in our group. Uh, we've, br we've broken up the sectors based on um, the industries that CPDHE had delineated in the Safer at Home. Also, we have a call center that is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, that you can call. And then um, lastly, we're going to be holding these sessions every week, um, and our session for retail will be on Thursdays um, from 2 to 3. Um, is that correct? I think that's that's correct. Okay, I was thinking because we're at three o'clock today. So this is the um, shortened link here, uh, but you can also go to the Boulder Chamber and you can look to see um, all of the scheduled um, sessions that we're going to have. But at that point, um, I think we're open for questions if you have any at this point. All right. Thank you, Angel. Just to so we don't get any more questions about this, the checklist, the mm -hmm. curbside checklist the link to resources, the link to the marketplaces, the link to the script, the link to the recordings um, will all be sent to you after this. The link to the signs, all the signs that the local chambers we came together and created um, that are uh, kind of for our community, that self-certification that you're following, um, you know, health guidelines that will all be emailed after this and it will be available on our website, on other chambers, on Boulder County Public Health. Um, so that'll, that, those resources are all gonna be available for you. We try to take away as much of the, you have to do it on your own as possible. Yeah. Uh, I ask that you put your questions in the Q&A function. It's, it's a little hard going back and forth, but I will try to capture some of the questions that were in the chat. If they developed a compliance plan that describes how they're planning on complying with rules, would you be able to review and advise if this should be compliant? So I believe we are, correct, Zach? We're able to review those? Yeah, we, we can um, until 
we get overwhelmed with them. Uh, so, you know, if, if every if every business sends us a compliance plan, you know, across Boulder County, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. Um, but if there's a, a select few, um, we will be able to do that. So right now we have capacity to do that, um, but that may change in the future. Uh, also, you know, we can advise, um, but want to emphasize that it is, um, you know, just because, you know, we looked at it and said that, yeah, this, this looks like you're compliant with the order. That doesn't necessarily guarantee um, that, that you are. It, you know, it's ultimately the, the business's responsibility to comply with the order. Um, but we can certainly, at this time, advise on those. Uh, you can send them to the email address that's on the screen. We have been working with businesses as we get complaints to really find, help them find a solution that's going to work for them. And, and I think that, you know, that brings up a good point, which is like, we would much rather work with you up front uh, and, and um, you know, get a plan in place that, that works for you um, and that is safe for the public and that, uh, you know, the public doesn't have questions about, you know, part of this is, uh, you know, we want to help you avoid uh, negative public perceptions of uh, your practices. So we would much rather work with you up front uh, before, you know, someone reports to us that, that, that there was something going on that they were concerned about um, and, and prevent that from happening. All right, a little bit about temperature checks. How small of a business does, do they have to be in order for people to be able to do temperature checks at home and self-report? I'm pretty sure that the updated Safer at Home yesterday said 25 or less. Is that accurate, Zach? I did not see a size on it. Okay. Lane, Lane brought it up earlier. It was 25 or less if it was the same as brought up earlier. Yeah, I still, I heard him say that earlier. Um, there he is. That's the requirement under the business sector. I don't recall, I don't have open this sector to see if it says the same, but that is the number cutoff within the business sector's guidance or requirements. Mm -hmm. So we can check on that and get back to the individuals on this call because there were a couple questions about yeah. self checks and for daily temperatures. One of the resources that you are providing is sort of that health check form um, and questions you can ask. Can you speak more to the gloves aspect? What material, how often they must be changed? I don't see grocery workers wearing gloves. So we can refer you to the PPE guide that is on our webpage. Um, I'm not sure about specific material, um, but know that if there are situations where you can't use gloves, that you can wash your um, hands vigorously um, and frequently. Um, I think it just really depends on what you're doing, right? So in retail specifically, it says if people are handling returns or cash that they need to wear gloves, um, but we need to also keep in mind that the uh, behavior and how we use the gloves can also be a source of contamination, right? So just because you're wearing gloves, it doesn't mean that you're fully protected if you don't keep good hygiene. You know, if you touch your face while wearing gloves, like, that's obviously not a best, I mean, not safe to do. So um, just because people are wearing gloves, it doesn't mean that they're 100% effective um, if, they, if their behaviors don't follow. And uh, regarding grocery stores, um, retail and grocery stores have the same exact language requiring gloves um, mm -hmm. under the Safer at Home order, which is wear gloves and face coverings or masks during customer interactions and wherever mm -hmm. possible during other work activities. Um, so, you know, if you, you know, if you see grocery store workers not wearing gloves during customer interactions, um, you know, please do let us know and we can follow up with the grocery store. They had a call this morning too. Uh, you, you mentioned the social distancing signage being in bi needing, needing to be bilingual. Is that a requirement or a suggestion? I believe that's a requirement in Boulder counties, is it not? And don't worry, some of those resources we're providing are everything in Spanish as well. So you don't have to go get a translator to convert the signage that we're providing into Spanish. It won't be available until tomorrow. Um, since we're on the Spanish language conversation, Zach, do you wanna mention the webinar tomorrow? Yeah, and, and for the signage uh, being bilingual, um, we, Boulder County is adopting the state's order uh, verbatim. 
um, and I'm not aware of anything in a state order requiring it by, to be bilingual. Um, at Angel Lane, correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, it's a good practice. It's a best practice, um, and we would recommend it. Uh, it. It does not require that, or doesn't clearly spell that out. That being said, if you know your clientele um, may need that in another language, reach out to us, especially if it's not one that we've already provided. We would like to try to get those resources to you. The, the important piece is that your customers understand the requirements. Um, so again, communicating that in a way that they understand it is what we're really trying to achieve. So we wanna have as many resources as we can. And regarding the um, Spanish language webinar, so tomorrow at six o'clock p.m., uh, the Boulder Chamber, the Latino Chamber of Commerce, Boulder County Public Health and others are hosting a Spanish language webinar for businesses of all types um, and you know, would encourage businesses and employees to attend that webinar uh, if they would prefer to receive this information in Spanish. Okay, another question about required versus suggested. Are high risk shopping hours required or suggested? Those are a suggestion. If six oh. feet can be made. Yep. Um, if six, go ahead, Zach. I was just going to clarify that that is called out in the state's um, yeah. component. So you do need to provide dedicated in store visit hours for high risk or severe illness uh, folks that are patrons. Yeah, I just saw that too. I, um, Lane is correct. I was wrong. Thank you. Is six, if six feet can be maintained in my shop during checkout, do I still need plexiglass or some other barrier? Yes, you still need plexiglass barrier. That's specifically called out in the safer at home. Okay. If we're doing all operations outside, can we take customer payment inside to ring it up where the customers stay outside? Can we do this without plexiglass since they're not really at the register or inside the facility? I believe that that would be in line with the um, curbside. Um, so I would follow the curbside guidance on that particular case. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so short answer, yes. Um, and the curbside guidance is on our Boulder County um, uh, resources for businesses page. And I, I send that out with the retail because I know there are questions about that. There is a question about, again, about clothing. When might you get an answer on how to sterilize return clothing? We might not. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the science is not settled on that, but, um, you know, we, we hear the need um, and the, the concern from the community about that. So um, we will do more investigation uh, and see if we can provide an answer. But, um, um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll see what we can do, um, but we may not be able to provide more than we have. Okay. We have a couple questions about dressing rooms. What are the requirements for dressing rooms and can dressing rooms be used to try on clothes? So I'm not sure. I would think that if you clean it, that they would be able to be used for uh, trying on clothes, but then again, those um, return policies and um, those guidelines on what like safe handling of clothes. I would personally want to get um, guidance from CPDHE on clothing first. Because if that closes, if that those clothes aren't purchased and they're technically being returned back to the store. Yeah. Yeah, and the you know um, those rooms would would fall under you know the the category of high touch areas. Uh, so you would frequently want to, you know, clean the door handles, clean the latches, uh, you know, anything else that might be touched in those uh, changing rooms would want to be uh, cleaned with high frequency. And do you want to maybe uh, shut down some of your, your uh, changing rooms in order to create more social distancing? That would be a great idea. <laughs> Karin, you're getting good at this. You, <laughs> you want a new job? We got one. <laughs> this is my 15th call. Yeah. Uh, what what will determine a reverse and safer at home and cause us to go back at, to stay at home? So you know the increase in um, in infection rates, 
um, uh, it, you know, but the, the big indicator is hospitalization rates. Uh, so, you know, a, a large part of the point of the stay at home order was to prevent the hospitals from being overwhelmed so that, you know, everyone with COVID uh, could be treated and there were enough ventilators for them, but also for people who had other reasons to go to the hospital, um, that they had beds and could be treated as well. So, um, you know, that's one of the most key metrics, um, but we'll be looking at, you know, the general rates of infection, uh, as well as, um, you know, where those are infections are occurring um, and, and how, you know, how that transmission is happening, uh, all those factors will, will play, but the, the biggie is um, the hospital uh, hospitalization rates. And I will put into the chat, um, and I'm sure Corinne will send out within resources afterwards, uh, Boulder County's live page of where they have daily updates on uh, the local Boulder County rates of infection. What? One suggestion that was brought into through a question, but because you don't have guidance on how to disinfect soft goods, one suggestion might be to figure out what stores like Target and Walmart and some of the large retailers are doing with their soft lines. All right, can you briefly go over how you talk to a customer about wearing a mask? Are they required to wear a mask? Can we turn them away? Uh, what does what that look like? Yeah, so right here we have kind of like a decision flow chart and let me know if you can see it. Um, is it clear to everybody? Might be a little small. So um, we basically, and this is gonna be, this is gonna be awkward at first because this isn't something that we're used to doing. So we would recommend that you probably go through this script, you know, when you're doing your employee training. But basically um, it's an introduction, like welcome to the business. I see that you're not wearing a face covering. Do you have one that you can put on? And then we have a flow chart, yes or no, right? So um, if they do have a mask, you can um, encourage them to put it on. Um, if they say that they can't for medical reasons, they can't be forced to wear a mask. Um, there are, you get into um, the Americans with Disability Act here. So um, you wanna be delicate um, if they say that they're not able to wear a mask. So then we have a couple of options. Great, thank you for bringing one. Please put it on your face. Um, and so just basically it walks you through how to do that. If you say no, then you definitely wanna take it from a point of curiosity um, because they could have a disability that prevents them from wearing it. So you don't want to get into enforcement mode, obviously at this point, but um, you can say, they can say no, they don't wanna uh, wear or they don't have one available and you can provide them a mask if they don't have one available. Um, and if they don't want to wear a mask, um, you can say, unfortunately, since you don't have a mask covering, um, it is required in Boulder County. Um, if you don't, if they don't mention that they have um, a medical condition that prevents them from wearing it. And again, this is for um, everybody over the age of 12 um, is encouraged to wear a mask unless they have a medical reason why they can't. So this is kind of the tool that we have here. It's not gonna be perfect, but you can adopt it to um, suit your needs. And by I encouraged, put, Angel means required. Yes, <laughs> yes. I just and put if, the link to that in the, in the text and it will go out with a resource email. So, and also you can contact, I mean, if it escalates, you can also contact your local law enforcement, right? Um, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to have a conflict with a customer because they're not following the law. Okay. Are employers required to provide masks and gloves for employees? Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, how do you determine a store capacity? So um, on the Boulder County website here, let me find the, you can download the capacity calculator, right? So we have the social distancing space calculator and it will um, download the calculator for you. I've already downloaded it. Uh, it's just an Excel tool and basically um, the total square footage of your establishment. So let's say it's a thousand square feet and then um, you also have to take into account how much of uh, the floor space is occupied by furniture, equipment, displays, and such, 
right? So let's say that we have 30% of our store that has other things. So it's probably a little bit low. So let's say 40% perhaps. And then it will pop out the maximum number of people in that space that you can have to accommodate um, that six feet social distancing. So that's 11. So um, a best practice would be to um, put that on the sign at the front of your door saying, you know, the capacity for this establishment is 11 people. But the thing that's important to note is that even internally, let's say you have a large space uh, with a small garden center, if all 11 people are in that small garden center and you can't maintain six feet social distance, then um, you need to um, implement other measures such as um, posting somebody at the entrance to that secondary room um, and then looking at those individual so this um, those individual spaces to see what the capacity is for that smaller garden center so just because you look at the entire square footage of the store that's not enough you really do need to look at like each individual space so that people can maintain six feet social distancing and this is a tool right it's just to help you um, understand what your limits should be um, and, and we should also say that that is a, um, a starting point. Um, you, know, you may, you know, that, that is basically the, the maximum um, and it may be more practical, um, you know, based on the layout of your store, uh, et cetera, that, you know, in a thousand square feet uh, with 40% of your floor space occupied, 11 people may be too many based on the, the, the actual layout of your floor. Um, so, uh, you know, just, look at that and, and see what would be um, appropriate for your store. Also, um, I'm embarrassed to say that I noticed that there's an error in this calculator this morning um, and I had requested that it be updated um, uh, and it has still not. Uh, so come, don't use what's up there today, give it a day, come back tomorrow um, and we'll have an updated version there. And one of the signs that we will be provided is a capacity sign. Um, as well as additional signage uh, telling people to continue to create social distance even if you're if you're under that capacity. So um, another thing also that I would like to bring up is that um, it includes your employees as well, right? So when you're calculating your 50% capacity, take into consideration how many employees you have in there as well as members of the public. Okay. So can a business post a sign at the entrance saying face masks are required to enter? Um, and this person specifically mentioned City of Boulder, but now that Boulder County is moving to the requirement, is that a sign they can put out? Yes, they can, because it's required in Boulder County to wear a mask. Okay. Um, can you confirm one way or the other if employees must wear gloves or if it's optional? I will pull up that checklist. It depends on what they're doing, what their task is. Yeah, so um, uh, I can confirm the state's order says employees must wear gloves and face coverings or masks during customer interactions. And so if, whenever possible during other work activities. So if they're stocking um, the shelves, they don't necessarily have to wear gloves. I mean, it's a good best practice we have here, right? Best practice. Okay. So there's, there are a couple questions on where to source plexiglass or cash wrap areas. I know that you guys have a resource page that will go out, um, that also will go out, but they have it on their website. The uh, Energize Colorado is going to be a marketplace. But there are a couple Boulder companies um, like Graphex and a couple others that are providing um, some of these resources that are on that page. If you so, hear of any additional or you found somebody else, please submit those to us so we can get them added to the list. So we do have, this is the um, from the Boulder County website um, that you were talking about, this plexiglass shield screen. We do have some suppliers listed here. It's not comprehensive and we don't necessarily endorse them, but we're just consolidating a list of people who are selling those. Some others I've heard that, um, you know, people that make um, trophies, they may have some of that, that around and they're not making as many trophies right now. So there are resources and we'll, we'll continue to update those. 
Okay. Do you have any recommendations for accepting donations at thrift shops? I don't, but we can check into that because um, I know that thrift stores were considered to be an essential business prior. So I don't know if prior to me joining this team, if we had talked about that, but I'll look into it. Okay. I mean, some, some ones that come to mind, you know, you'll, you'll want your employees who are handling those donations um, to wear a mask if they're going to be interacting with customers as we just established as well um you know gloves uh, uh highly recommended there um and you know there i see some questions um you know regarding clothing but um you know in general quarantining the um the items uh for you know perhaps five days um and and i know you know folks want to know how long is it that i need to quarantine that item per I, you know, exactly. Um, and that information, that science is still developing. Um, we're going to look into it further. We we'll hope to have an update for you next week. But, um, you know, that information is just unclear uh, to us as well. But certainly, you know, um, quarantining for, for five days would be a, a decent idea. And it would seem like um, the policy should at least be similar to the return policy, right? So the guidance that the state gives is to restrict return policies to things that can be um, adequately cleaned or disinfected. So um, perhaps thrift stores could limit uh, what they are accepting at any particular time. And I think if there's an ability to launder things and then have that five day quarantine, that, that's, that's ideal. Yeah. Things that can be wiped with a disinfectant wipe, that's ideal. Okay, so one, a couple more questions about the mask guidance. Um, there's just concern that people don't have to, they're not required to validate their medical reason. And just maybe one more touch one more time on that. And is that gonna cause, if a lot of people are using that excuse, will that be an issue? It's certainly going to be an issue. Sorry, Zach. Um, it, it's going to be part of our metrics in the effectiveness of our, our ordinances. So if people are not wearing masks, that likely will contribute to greater disease transmission. So um, again, the, the touch point isn't pressing people to verify they can validate to you they have a medical reason. That, that's not the point. So if people really are going to ignore this. Um, it will contribute to disease in our community and it will very likely move us backwards um, to stay at home. And it's quite similar to service animals, right? Um, you know, you're, you're not allowed to inquire, um, you know, in great detail about, you know, an individual service animal. Um, but there are, you know, there is guidance out there about service animals, about exactly, you know, what you can and can't ask. Um, and where those limits are. And you know, with masks, it would be a similar thing. And I do think that there's gonna be a cultural element to it as they see that everybody is wearing a mask, then perhaps they'll challenge it less because it's the cultural norm. And just to verify, you don't have to answer this one, Boulder County's order will go into effect May 9th for the, uh, for the face mask. City of Boulder currently has one. All right, there's a question about yoga studios, um, dance studios, performing arts companies. What's the current guidance on that? So those fall under personal services, correct? Um, or um, fitness exercise. So you can do group training sessions from what I understand with four people or less, but yeah. perhaps Lane would be a better person to yeah. address that. Um, yoga studios uh, and the like are not allowed to operate. Um, you can find that under the um, uh, Safer at Home FAQ on the state page. Um, and I'll just pull that up uh, as well as the other. Um, and trampoline park would also fall under that gym and entertainment yeah. venue, correct? Yeah. Yep. So what is still closed? Gymnasiums, yoga and fitness studios, bowling alleys, playgrounds, libraries, cigar bars, uh, bars, uh, in-service dining, um, movie performance theaters, opera houses, casinos. And the, the one sort of exception to that, I think, is what Angel was talking about, that private training 
So the gyms need to be closed, but private training for four or less is allowed. So the gym can't be open for general business, but private uh, four or less training can persist. So that's kind of the caveat to that. So if you There's have requirements about requ equipment too though, right? I would recommend that if that is your service area that you attend the um, like the personal services section, they're more able to um, speak to that. And That's I can answer real quick today. if it's helpful. Thanks, Cami. Yeah, so personal private training, it can be one instructor with up to four people, max, no shared equipment whatsoever. But if you happen to have a family that you're doing the training with where they have more than four people and they're all from the same household, you can do a family as a whole if they're five or six people. Thanks, Cami. Okay, a couple quick questions and then we have to ta um, wrap it up, but a reminder that we do have weekly sessions for retail. For small retail, is there an exemption to the 50% reduction in staffing? No, because that's necessary to maintain that 60% or sorry, that six feet distance from what I understand. The 50% the, the reduction is 50% is, uh, capacity. Of, this, um, of the facility, of the, of the facility, yeah. So it, it's, not, it's not referencing um, the number of employees, but the, the capacity of the space. So in the office section, they do address the capacity, or like the workforce, 50% of the workforce, Correct. but in retail specifically, considering the fact that you're engaging with customers, that 50% capacity includes the customers and your employees. So, so in, in short answer, yes. Um, you know, like if you've got two employees, you don't need to drop to one. Can we only accept credit card payments or do we need to continue to accept cash and checks? So we do have in the curbside some guidance on if you have to handle cash and there are some best practices. Um, so if you have a tray and you can have um, somebody put the credit card or the cash in the tray, then um, you're still maintaining that six foot distance at the curbside. But um, I would take a look at the resources that we have on how to um, best handle curbside. Um, so it's not only, it says virtual payments when possible. Okay. Is the capacity calculator you mentioned earlier the max? Or is that taking into effect the 50%? So again, that is just, um, that's just a tool. It's not like 100%, like if you get 11 people on your calculator, that's just a starting place, as Zach had mentioned. Um, there are a lot of factors that go into um, basically your place's capacity and it's how much other things you have in your store, right? Um, so that, sorry, can you repeat the question again? It was, does that 50%, does the calculator already take into account the 50%? So that calculator takes into account how much space you need to maintain six feet between every individual. Yeah, so in, in short, it is the max, um, and you'll need to make sure you're, you're complying with the 50%. Um, and also, you know, if, if the maximum is even feasible to maintain the um, uh, six feet distancing. Okay, two more questions. We've covered cleaning of payment areas, returns, but what about product on shelves? Should those be clean? I mean, if they are high touch areas, then I would recommend cleaning them because it doesn't specify the products per se. It says, um, you know, your people who are stocking the shelves should be encouraged to wear gloves. Um, so they should be clean unless they're touched. Okay. Would private shopping appointments be okay as an option for high-risk populations as opposed to dedicated hours? Absolutely. Yeah. And then one last question. Should restrooms be closed to the public? It's not required. Um, you know, it could be a, um, yeah, it's, it's not required. There was one more um, question I saw here that I wanted to, to address, which was, um, you know, if, if you can't meet all of the 
uh, mandatory guidelines, uh, you cannot open for business until you can meet all the, the mandatory, I should say requirements, not guidelines. If you can't meet all the mandatory requirements, you can't well, operate. Okay. No, we didn't answer all of them. Uh, some of the questions that you have up will be uh, answered in the resources and the Q and A's. And then you guys are still gonna look for guidance on the um, soft lines, more of the clothing sterilization. But reminder that we do have weekly calls for retail. Uh, they're on Thursdays at two o'clock. They will be going on for the foreseeable future in order for us to continue to share more information for Boulder County Public Health to share more information and to get feedback, best practices and so forth. Uh, you will be getting an email with, from me with a bunch of resources. If you don't see something that you can't find, please do not hesitate to reach out. I wanna thank you for participating in this to learn how to open your business safely. I wanna thank Boulder County Public Health. This is hour seven of eight where they really dedicated time to help businesses understand the requirements and help them open safely um, in the future. And then I wanna thank you um, for continuing to, to stick with this, to get the information and to understand that public health and economy, we have to balance both of them. Um, all, our all the chambers are very dedicated to making sure you have the resources and we're gonna continue to try to get answers to questions and get feedback from um, our businesses. Thank you and have a wonderful day.